Hey guys, welcome back to another video. I know it's been, I don't know the last time I made a video, but it doesn't matter. We'll completely ignore that and dive right into today's video, which is going to be about color grading. Now I have made one in the past, but it was quite basic. So in today's one, we're going to dive a little bit deeper. We're going to learn how to color grade using masks and hopefully step up your color grading game. So let's not waste any time and dive right in. All right. So we're here in Premiere and we have our clip over here. It is some drone footage that I've taken in Turkey shot on the Mavic Pro in D-Log. So it's a pretty nice clip, uh, but it's very flat. So right before we dive in, we want to have an understanding of what we want to do. You want to most of the time kind of control the light. You want the viewer's eye is always directed towards the lightest part of the image. So you want to control where the light source is, where the viewer's eye is going. So you can see this example right here, the lights over here, and then all this area is dark. So the viewer's eye is directed around this area. Same thing with this example. We have our light source over here and all these corners are dark, dark, dark. So it's not very distracting and it gives us very aesthetically pleasing look. So we're going to do the same thing. These are my images from Taiwan. We guys can check it out on Instagram. What we're going to do is we're going to do it by adjustment layer. So we've already created an adjustment layer here, drag it on top and we're going to create our first lumetri color correction. Okay, type in lumetri and drag it on top. Now before diving in, uh, you want to select a frame at where you want to color grade. So you park it right here. So I like this one right here. It gives us pretty much everything. The sun's in the middle. So I picked this clip specifically. It's not the greatest clip because we can see over here we're clipping out. But I picked this on purpose to show you guys how you can color grade such a clip uh, where the sky's blown out but the foreground's okay. So that way you guys have more control over the parts that you're grading. Okay. So the first part, we have global adjustments and we have local adjustment. Global adjustments affects the entire clip. So if I were to change the exposure here, it's affecting the entire clip. Local adjustments tends to be with masks, power windows, or, or other techniques using uh, HSL. So first thing we're going to do is work on the sky over here. We're going to make this a bit smaller. We're going to set our mask, triangular mask, drag it on top, and cover our sky. So we're going to drag it here cover our entire sky and we're going to feather it just so it blends in nicely with the rest of the video and we're going to start our correction so first thing this is d -lock. so it's so it's very flat we're going to crush our blacks a little bit okay we're going to take down our shadows we want to bring back as much color as we can we're going to take down the highlights Right, and now we're starting to see more color out of it. We'll keep it, we'll keep it at minus 100. So I think that's looking pretty good. We're gonna add a little curve adjustment just to give it some more contrast. Take that down and let's take our highlights a little bit back up. So it's an S curve, but we're not lifting up the highlights because it's already blown out, right? And what I like to do is add a little bit of magenta to the sky, just give it a nice look. Can increase it a little bit. I think we can go a bit extreme with this one. I really like when the sun sets very dramatic. That's the look we're gonna go for. Let's keep it at 35. I think that looks great. So we've created our first look. Now, you typically want to track the mask, but in this case, our horizon and the sky stays the same throughout the clip. So there's no really no need for us to track it. It's staying throughout the same. All right, so now we're, we're done with the sky. We wanna work on the foreground. So we're going to go back, take our adjustment layer, drag it on top, and we are going to work on the foreground. We're going to do the same thing and create a mask on the foreground. Now, the reason I told you why we did this to separate parts, so for the sky and the foreground, is because the sky is blown out already. And if we're going to create a... Uh, any sort of contrast, we're gonna blow out the sky even more. Now what we're gonna do is also get some contrast out of it. Take the blacks down, maybe a bit more. Uh, let us take down the shadows a little bit. And we wanna create some nice contrast, so we're gonna increase the contrast over here. I think it might be too dark here, so we're gonna take the blacks up a little bit and also the shadows. Right. 
So I think I really like how that's looking. We can increase the whites over here because I want to emphasize the light source, right? So I think this is looking good. Let's add some magenta so it matches the sky. Not that extreme though. Right about there looks good, I think. Yeah, not too extreme. So let's go down to our curves again and just create a little bit more contrast. We kind of want to emphasize our light source. This time we're going to lift up our highlights, get more drama out of it. And what we're going to do since we have our feather over here also affecting our sky and we don't want to do that, we're going to drag our mask a little bit down. Just a little bit, not too much. And I think I like how that's looking. Let's take a look at the before and after. So that's before and that's after and it's blending in pretty nicely I think. It looks pretty good. It's almost seamless, right? All right, now we're going to add another layer. So we're going to add another adjustment layer and another Lumetri color. Add that on top. Now what we're going to do, our game plan is to, like I said, our whole goal is to emphasize this light source. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to create a circular mask, right? We're going to kind of make the light source more dramatic. And to do that, we're going to brighten up the place where the light source is coming from. So the light source coming from here, we want to make that area brighter. All right, we're going to go to correction again. We're going to lift the whites this time a little bit because that's the area that we want to brighten up. Okay. And I think we can expand it a little bit. Yeah, we can expand and also feather just so it blends in nicely. So we have our light source emphasized. We can see the brightest part of the image is very nice. Uh, let's increase the exposure by 0.1. Maybe feather it a little more just to blend it in. That looks amazing. So see the difference before and after. It's very subtle, but with color grading, it's all about subtlety. So now we're gonna create one more mask we already did the inside. Now we want to darken the outside a little bit, to create more drama, more emphasis, and make it look epic. So we're going to go in here, add another Lumetri. So the reason I'm creating them on the different adjustment layers is so if I go back, I can adjust each one, right? If I have them all on one adjustment layer where they're lined up, once you've set it, I don't know if it's a bug or it's just me, but I can't fix it anymore. It goes to the last Lumetri color that I added. This way I can go back to each one and adjust it. So for this last one, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a little vignette. Uh, we'll go to minus maybe 0.2, feather it all the way and midpoint all the way to 100. And let's see how that looks before and after. So before, and after. It's very subtle, but like I said, it's all about the subtlety. We've created some nice drama. You can see the edges. They're very, not very dark, but they're pretty dark. And our main emphasis is right here in the middle where the light source is coming from. And I love how this is looking. And just to blend everything together, we're going to create one final one, which is going to be for our global adjustments. If you remember what that is, it means we're going to apply correction or I would say color grading to the entire clip just to give it that final touch and blend everything together very nicely. So what we're going to do here is, like I said, I really love magenta. So I'm going to add some magenta over here, like 0.9. Yeah, 9.5 looks good. And we'll go into our curves panel, go to the red and let us take it down from the shadows. Okay. And bring this back up in the highlights. Now it looks a bit terrible right now but bear with me. We're gonna take our greens and we're gonna also take it down. Not that much. A little bit. So a little bit goes a long way over here. And our highlights. It's a bit too much. Right there looks pretty good I think. Yeah maybe go back to our red and crease it. And push our green even more. That's a bit too much. 
So you got to really finesse it till, till you get the sweet spot. I, I, I really like it right there, okay? So let's go back to our blues. Well, not back to first time, actually. And we are going to push in some blues in our shadows. And take it off from my high highlights. And I kind of like how it looks. It's a bit over, I'd say, overly purple. So we might tone this down. Take it down to like 2.4. Yeah, that looks great. And I love how this is looking. That's pretty much it. So as a final step, I would just add some noise reduction, but that's pretty much it. I love how this is looking. Let's take a look at the before and after. So that's before, and this is after. It looks fantastic. It looks amazing. It just adds that last touch where it blends everything together nicely and gives it the final look. One last thing I forgot is our adjustments right here is we didn't track our mask. So you need to make sure that you track the mask so it's following this area all the time. We didn't do it for our foreground and background, like I said, because they're always in the same position. But this light source, we can see is changing. So it should start here, right? And then we just let Premiere do its thing and track the mask. So let's just play it one last time and see how it looks after tracking. So I think it looks pretty epic. It looks very dramatic, very cinematic. Uh, this area right here might be a bit too dark, but I think it looks really good. Our eye is focused on this area right here. Like I said, it's all about controlling the light. And I think we did an amazing job over here. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this one and learned something new. Uh, if you guys need any help, you can let me know down in the comment section below. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys learned something. If you did, give the video a thumbs up and that's it for this one. I'll see you guys next time.